Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to show you how you can test for specific and direct effects in Amos via the user-defined estimands approach. Now before we get started I should note that underneath the video description you will find a PowerPoint presentation that I've put together on this topic and it goes into a lot more detail than I'm going to be covering in this video so I'm mainly going to be focusing in on the walkthrough of how to perform the analyses but if you want more detail check out the PowerPoint. Uh, also underneath the video description you will find uh, a link to the SPSS data file as well as the Amos file. This demonstration is actually pivoting off of a previous demonstration where I uh, showed you how you can uh, set up and run a basic path analysis model in Amos and uh, the analysis was based off of some data associated with this article uh, entitled Relationship Between Anxiety and Burnout Among Chinese Physicians, a Moderated Mediation Model, which was found at the PLUS One website. So I have uh, uh, information on that in the PowerPoint, so you can be sure to go there if you want to read more. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to uh, basically open up uh, the path model that I've drawn in that previous video, and we're going to start there. So I'm going to go ahead and assume that you know how to set up a basic AMOS model. So here we have our model drawn out. Basically in this model, uh, really quickly we'll go over the variables. We have extroversion and neuroticism. These variables are predicting anxiety. Uh, and we have mediators in the model of positive coping, burnout, and negative coping. So what we're going to do in this demonstration is uh, test for the indirect effect of neuroticism on anxiety. Um, and basically we're going to uh, test several specific indirect effects. Now before we do this, let's go ahead and uh, what we're going to need to do is to label our paths that are going to be um, utilized in the computation of our estimands. So what I'm going to do is right click on this path right here from neuroticism to burnout and go under object properties and then under uh, and make sure you're highlighted this well. Um, under uh, regression weight, I'm going to type in P1. Excuse me, P1. There you go. Uh, then I will highlight this one over here, and I will type in P2. Uh, then I will uh, highlight this next one right here. This is just part of our demonstration. We'll call this P3. And then over here, we'll call this one P4. Then uh, this one right here, we'll call it P5. And then the last one, we will click on that arrow, and we'll, we will call it P6. Now, as we're looking at our uh, figure right now, basically each of the paths are representing direct effects of one variable on another. So uh, P1 represents the direct effect of neuroticism on burnout. P2 is representing the direct effect of burnout on anxiety right here. Uh, P3 is representing the direct effect of neuroticism on anxiety. P4 of neuroticism on negative coping. P5 is negative coping on burnout. And then P6 is negative coping on anxiety. Now if I want to talk about the indirect effect of neuroticism on anxiety, basically there are several uh, components of the indirect effect. So Essentially, if I was to multiply P1 and P2 right there, that would get me the specific indirect effect of neuroticism on anxiety via the mediator burnout. If I multiply uh, the, the uh, path 4 and path 6 uh, coefficients, that will get me the indirect effect via negative coping. If I was to take the product of path 4, path 5, and path 2 up here, then that would get me the indirect effect essentially through a serial mediation where I have the mediators of negative coping and burnout. So essentially there are three specific indirect effects between neuroticism and anxiety and if I was to sum those, uh, those three specific indirect effects up, that would get me the total indirect effect of neuroticism on anxiety. And if I take the total indirect effect of neuroticism on anxiety and I add the coefficient for path 3 right here, that would get me the total effect of neuroticism on anxiety. And uh, just really quickly, if that was a little bit uh, difficult to follow, uh, go back into the PowerPoint. Uh, I have uh, several slides that cover uh, just what I've uh, gone over. 
Now the thing is, is that uh, let's say that we want to run our analysis uh, just kind of through the standard approach and I'll go under analysis properties right here and select a couple of the things I normally select and then I select indirect, direct and total effects in this box right here. Um, then this selection, what it's going to produce are uh, essentially the total indirect effects along with the direct and total effects. And so it's not going to give me any of the specific indirect effects. Like I said, the total indirect effect uh, between neuroticism and anxiety is composed of three specific indirect effects. So although I would get the total indirect effect using this option right here, I won't get the specific indirect effects that comprise that total effect. Um, so just uh, really quickly, just to show you, if I go under bootstrap right here, um, and I click on uh, perform bootstrap, I've set this for 2000. I'll select for, uh, bias corrected confidence interval. I've set this at 95%. Again, these are covered in the uh, PowerPoint. Um, if I run this analysis, and go under my uh, text output right here and go under estimates and then matrices uh, right here you can see as I kind of scroll down I have the indirect effects and this would be the total indirect effect of neuroticism on anxiety which is 0 0.005799 and then if I uh, click on um, the the uh, indirect effects and then bootstrap confidence you can see I've got the lower bound of, of an interval and the upper bound of the confidence interval around our um, our estimate but again I don't have uh, the specific indirect effects uh, represented so to do that what I can do is uh, use the user defined estimate option and so uh, it's a little tricky to see maybe in this video but at the bottom of your screen right here it says not estimating any user defined estimate. So what I want to do is to uh, click on this little box right here and then go under uh, define new estimate. So when I click on this, this box is going to open up and this is where I'm going to uh, add some syntax uh, to compute some estimates, basically those specific indirect effects. And I've also got a couple of additional computations I'll show you as well. But the main thing is, is that as we're computing, you have to reference the labels that are in um, our figure right here. So the P1 all the way through P7, or excuse me, P6, the path one, path all the way to uh, path six, we have to reference those. So um, what I'm going to do first off is I'm going to create a comment line. I, I can do that just by using an apostrophe. And I'm going to type in computing specific indirect effects. This is just something just kind of showing you that you can use uh, comment lines in this. It's, the program's not going to read it or try to do anything with it, but it's, it can be helpful when you're setting up uh, syntax files. Then, next, what I will do is I will type in SIE1, and I'm just calling that, that's, for, that's the, the name of my first estimate, which is just referring to uh, uh, my reference to specific indirect effect, the first one. So I'll type in equals. And then I'm going to uh, incorporate the uh, computations with uh, using the labels from our path diagram. So in this case, I'm going to take um, I'm going to type in P1 times P2. So that's going to reference the specific indirect effect of neuroticism on anxiety via the burnout variable. Next, I'll do SIE2 equals and then P4 times P6. And and so the the times is just our asterisk. So that's going to reflect the indirect effect of neuroticism on anxiety via ne negative coping. Then I'm going to do SIE3 equals, and then we'll say P4 times P5 times P2. And that will be the indirect effect of neuroticism on, anx on anxiety via the uh, serial mediation through the mediators of negative coping and burnout. Um, also, let's just say that I want I wanted to compute the total indirect effect, which is which we already uh, generated in our output. But I can do that too. I'm just going to say to, uh, computing total indirect effect right here, and I'll just uh, type in TIE. That's just the name I'm giving uh, the estimate, and then I can type in SIE1 plus SIE2 plus SIE3. 
So notice I can I can use uh, previous estimates in the computation of later estimates. So this can be a really handy tool to use or have um, if if uh, certain pieces of output are not generated that you that you might be interested in having. Let's do another one. We'll type in uh, computing total effect. So in this case right here, I'll just uh, title or label the estimate TE and then say equals. TIE, which is our total indirect effect, uh, plus uh, P3, which is our path 3 from our model. So you can see that right there. So once you've typed in your estimates, then you'll need to check your syntax. So you have to click on this button right here for check syntax, and you'll see it says syntax is OK. The next step is to save um, the file. So I'll, I'll uh, go to File, Save As. And I'll just uh, I'll just call this uh, path analysis demo. Uh, actually, I've already saved it. I'll just save over that. And there you go. So now, once that's done, I can click out. And at the bottom of your screen, you've got the uh, name of that particular file. It says estimating path analysis demo. So now we are ready to go in terms of running our analysis. But just make sure. Um, that when you're using the user defined estimate, you have to use that in conjunction with bootstrapping. So, uh, again, going back under analysis properties, we've selected our bootstrap option, so we're we're good to go. Now, one limitation in Amos is that you cannot bootstrap or perform bootstrapping through that uh, option um, if you happen to have missing data. So uh, that is a limitation. So um, I'm just kind of warning you that if you try to run the a bootstrap analysis without um, and you have missing data you'll end up with an error message so it's just kind of a that's one of the more uh, kind of frustrating aspects of the program but nevertheless we can go ahead and click on calculate estimates and so we'll now go back under view text right here under estimates and you'll see under scalars we can double click there and then go down to user defined estimate so these are the unstandardized um, uh, estimates that we've uh, that we've generated. So these coefficients are in unstandardized form because we're computing the estimates based on the unstandardized uh, path coefficients. But you'll see right here the TIE. That's exactly what we generated previously uh, under the analysis properties um, options. And so it was uh, the total indirect effect is 0 0.005799, exactly the same. Then we have the first specific indirect effect is minus 0 0.001479. The second one is 0 0.004498 and so forth. There's a third one right there. And then the total uh, effect is computed right there. To get our confidence intervals, what we can do is uh, basically just click on bootstrap confidence down here. And so now you get a column of values. These are the uh, the uh, estimates associated with our user defined estimates, basically. And then we have the lower and upper bounds of our 95% confidence intervals. So uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. Again, I encourage you to download uh, the, the uh, PowerPoint that I've uh, provided as a link underneath the video description. And I appreciate you watching.